Happy Friday! Happy Friday! Oh, these are the with worst. With Pastor Lake and Anderson on. These are the worst. They're yeah. like they're <laughs> like what they make a candle out of, and they just. This is the go. generic cheap candy, and the yellow one always tastes like banana. So I'm gonna give that to you. Well, oh, we I had. Don't like the banana. I had one of these. They almost taste good, and no, then you're they like, don't. these are terrible. They're this just. Is, this is like the cheap, cheap generic. You put a candy. wick in this. <laughs> a wick. Put a wick in it. It's a candle. I still have I want, a piece. I'm not even gonna do from it. From about three years ago. <laughs> it's still, oh it's still in there. Yeah. I won't do it. No. No, that'll never come out. Mm -mm. Yeah, Once it goes in, it doesn't come you. out. Yeah. You, it won't go down or out. It'll just it just be stays. There. That's an all day <laughs> or two. It it's like gum. It's like an hour it later. It, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's now an hour, hour later. It's now an hour later. later. It's now f <laughs> I've never had an hour now and later that wasn't concrete hard. Right. Never yeah. in my life. They're always... And I, uh, think we, I think we have to use our calories well. Like, especially at my age. Mm. I, I'll, uh, that's why I do that. I'll be like... I'd be like, that's not worth the calories. Ah, not like at if all. I'm gonna if I'm gonna do the calories, I'm gonna pick I'm gonna choose them wisely. Right. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. You know what we've never done? What? Is watch me on wake up, watch me on wake up. Can I tell you this was one other thing that's never been done before? <laughs> I Lake was Pastor, Pastor, Lakin was pre Pastor Lakin was preaching this weekend. Yes. And he dry heaved on stage. And that's never been done before. <laughs> never I don't been. believe that the, a pastor in a, all of oh. history has ever dry heaved in front of the congregation. It was pretty crazy <laughs> awesome. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where are we? Wake, Wake up. up. Pastor Jason. And my awesome, amazing son. Uh, we did youth takeover. And uh, what a phenomenal job. Yeah. I, I was just so impressed. I wish I was that good at your age. Yeah, Thank you. I don't even know if I started message. teaching at his age yet. I don't think I, I don't think I was at your age when I started. I think I was yeah. at thirty. Thank you. And um, just blew, blew me away. You have to watch it. It's an amazing message. And, and you really talked about um, well, you kind of started out with capturing your thoughts, but you've got to this idea of this obstacle of only that, that sometimes we in in life we don't feel like we're enough, right? For whatever it is that God seems to have put in front of us, right? Yeah, yeah. And and I I taught out of uh, Matthew chapter fourteen. Um, verse verse uh, 16 or, or 15. So it's the disciples and they come to Jesus and they say, hey, all these people here, um, we want them to leave to go eat food. And, and then Jesus resp responds with, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And I just love that idea that how many times have we prayed for something and then God is like, well, I've already given you what you need to do. You just have to actually do something about it. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, uh, and then he says this, he says, they, they, um, then the disciples respond with, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. Yeah. So the only, only. What we have isn't enough. Mm. Yep. Isn't that what it is? We won't step out oftentimes because we don't have enough. Yeah. We, oh, I, this is all I got. I can't do I'm it. Not smart what you enough. forget is God always make up the gap between what you got and what you need. Mm. You forgot I'm going to be with you. Right? And you right. brought up that, that. But let's go to the clip. You talked a little bit about Moses. Let's watch this. So when we talk about Moses, we talked about he's physically called. God says, I need you to do this. But Moses is mentally trapped. Who am I? Then when we look at the Israelites, we know that they are physically standing outside of slavery, outside of Egypt, outside of everything that, that they had prayed for God to take them out of. They were physically called out, but they were mentally stuck. Wow. Well, it's, so it's really these, these um, insecurities that we have. Like if I were to say say to you, hey, if God told you to do something, would you say no to him? Mm. We'd no. all go, well, no, of course I would, I would say, right. yes, sir, whatever you would like me to do, <laughs> sir. Yeah. But, but the reality of Christianity is that our, ins our insecurities, our feelings of not enough are always saying no to God. Mm. Always holding out. One of the things that it was, it was, like I'm listening to you, you know, and I've been studying the body for a, a Bible for a long time, but you brought out a revelation that hit me hard. I wanted to talk about when Moses, I never saw it taught the story a gajillion times. Mm -hmm. When Moses said, go into the land that God said that we're going to have, he goes, see if it is what God said it was going to be. Yeah. It's good or bad. Go see he if sent it is. the spies in, and, and he, it's wait, almost wait, wait, like he's, are you telling me he's double-checking God. You don't, yeah. <laughs> God's like, hey, we got to get, come on, guys, guys, we're not ready for this. You know there's going to be a checkup. <laughs> but don't we, you know, God says go, and we're like, do I really have what I need? Yeah. Did God or, really give me the talents? Yeah. Or, or sometimes we say, is it really going to be better over there? Is, is God's blessing really going to be really? what I want? Or maybe mm -hmm. I want what I can get out of life. And I, mm -hmm. I think that, that that also is like built on an insecurity or, or a lack of trust either in myself or in God. I was looking at 1 Kings chapter 3 and, and thinking about your message um, that Solomon had been made king now. 
David's son. And we all know Solomon had like 40 years of peace and like the nation experienced right. more wealth than they had ever seen before. It was like a massive, uh, huge, it was the best time in Israel's uh, entire history. But this is what, how he started his, his kingship. Is he's having this conversation with God. He says, Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. When you're like the big David, it's hard yeah. to walk behind those shoes, wow. David's shoes, yeah. you know. And then it says, But I am only a little child. I don't know how to carry out my duties. Mm. So even Solomon here in this moment was thinking like, I, I, I you got the enough. wrong guy. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to need more. Yeah, and so this is the story where he asks for that wisdom, that discernment, that he might be able to rule over the people well, and God gives it. That's even, I mean, that I relate to that so much even when I, um, like when my daughter was born, like holding my daughter, and I, I tell the story in my teaching, but I was holding my daughter, and it doesn't get more like physically called by God to be a father than actually holding your daughter in your arms, newborn that night. And I remember looking in the mirror and, and I softened it for the teaching because I didn't want to sound uh, uh, like a wimp. But one of the questions that I actually asked myself was, um, like, like, God, are you sure about this? I, I am only a child. I'm only a kid. I'm only 25 years old. And uh, Pastor Christian said something on Saturday night. He said, um, we don't have the authority to qualify ourselves in the first place. So why do we feel like we have the authority to disqualify ourselves? Yeah, so that was a powerful story. Really I was like, we actually played that clip, that exact <laughs> clip. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I was, I was like, wow, that's so good that, that what God has called you to do. Um, and what I love about the scripture, if, if we keep going on, on verse 18, so the disciples say, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. We don't have enough. And then Jesus' response isn't, um, he doesn't say that you have enough. He doesn't say that you are enough. He doesn't say, um, his response is nothing about you. His response is actually, uh, verse 18, bring them here to me. And even (laughs) even when Moses in Exodus chapter 3, even when Moses says, uh, who am I that I would be the one to bring them out of Egypt? God doesn't say, you are this, you are this, you are all the things that you are, all the things that you are not. Instead, he says, I will be there with you. And he, he fixes your focus on onto him and everything that he can do. And I think it really goes to show you that this is the pattern that God's going to do in your whole life. Your whole life is he's going to put something in front of you that's bigger than you. Right. Because he wants to have, like he wants to play with you. He wants to have fun. He wants, right. he wants to participate. He wants a world where he gets to be part of. Like David wasn't facing Goliath going, I can kill this guy. David was facing Goliath going, all right, God can take this guy out. I'm just going right. to chuck a stone and watch what God does. <laughs> well, it's yeah. true. It's like David showed up and they're like, he's like, what's going on? They're like, it's a rabbit out there. It's a really mean <laughs> rabbit. He's a vicious rabbit. And David's like, he's got gnarly teeth. <laughs> and David's like, okay, guys, I got this pretty easy. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. He was, it, <laughs> it describes him as this massive person. His shield's right. like as heavy as a car. Like when you start reading up this, like the spear was as long as like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. Was, He's like 5'3". Maybe bigger. 5'4". <laughs> oh, I picture him even bigger than you. Like I picture wow, like a he's giant massive man. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say he was like nine, nine foot. You know, what, what you find is when you face impossibilities, uh, things that have a ceiling, uh, one, that's exciting because it that is. means that I need God. But two, you find out throughout the scriptures, God's always like, what do you got? Right? And so we got to put the little bit we have in, 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 in the coffer. Jesus, Jesus is like, bring it to me. Yeah, he's like, he, so Jesus could have just said, all right, and had Uber show up and fed everybody. But he, he's like, Uber. I, or DoorDash. I think they had DoorDash back then, one of those. I don't know which one they had. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, there's no such thing as Uber back then, but DoorDash, yeah, I get that. DoorDash. I get that one, okay. Right? And, and here's, here's something for you to think about, is that God wants to, you and him to do it together, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Jesus is like, all right, what do you have? Bring it to me, yeah. right? Uh, Elijah, with the, with the lady, uh, with the, the oil, he goes, well, what do you got? She's like, hey, I'm, you know, they're coming to get me. He goes, what do you got? She's like, all I got is a, you know, a little bit back yeah, a little here. little bit of oil. And he goes, bring it to me. Bring it to so me. the little that you have put in God's hands ends up being more than you can contain. Mm-hmm. And you always see that because what do we have? Well, we only have some fish mm-hmm. and a little bit of bread. Bring it to me. Put it in, in Jesus' hands. Boom, here we go. And not only do we feed everybody, but we have 12 baskets left over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think maybe Jesus gives us a really interesting key when, when it comes to things like that we face that seem bigger than us, like just being a dad. Mm. You know, I say just being a dad. I've been doing it for a long time. But when you're, when you're first kind of looking at that, oh, and going, wow. what we do is we, we think, well, how am I going to raise you up to be, you know, pure, to escape the culture of today? Mm-hmm. not be broken when you get older like how am i going to manage that and you're thinking about when she's 20 and here she is you know a couple days old 
And I think that's why the Bible says, like, Jesus, like, don't worry about tomorrow. Like, just pay attention to, to right. today. Mm. It doesn't mean don't have plans. That's not what he was saying. He was like, w- the worry part. Like, don't worry about when she's 20. God will order your steps. Come so on. let's just be great today. If I, I can manage today. Yeah. Right. It's hard, and Jason brings out a good point. It's hard to say, hey, I'll be great for 20 years. Yeah. Right? But it's able to go, well, I can be great today. Yeah. Mm. And it, maybe that's even too big for you. You go, you know, I'll be great for the next few hours. Yeah. And then after that, go, I could be great for another couple hours. Yeah. I could be great for another great. Whatever you have to break it up into. But the point of the matter is, is just be great in the moment that you're in. It's true. And I, I think that that's an Im, Im, important point. And I think that it's going to culminate into, well, you're going to look back on your life and go, wow, look what God did. Because it really, that's the the biggest point of getting, of doing life with God. Right. Is that you take on things that are too big and you're like, I can't go another day in this job. But with God, you could. Mm. You know, I can't go another year in this marriage. Well, with God, you can. Come on. I can't seem, I can't, I'm I'm all out of love. I'm all All out out of love. I'm so So lost lost without without you. But instead, you just go, but with God, I have all the love I need. I have all the resources I need. I have all the mercy I need. I have all the grace I could ever need. I have more than I can contain with God. And so I can go on another day. I can go on another year. And in fact, I'll be successful in that. And God will show himself up in my life because that's what he's up to. He's wanting to show up in your life so that the people around you see God working through you because then God gets declared as righteous. His glory gets shown on the earth. And then other people are like, well, I want, I want that kind of life. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially when you don't have much gifts. It's contagious. Because when you have little gifts, God's got to do more. That like, excites me. I'm, uh, I have weenie talents. <laughs> So that when I do something, like God, like it, it excites me. You're dancing. My no, your gift for God dancing. God is though. strong. Yeah. So if you got a little bit of weakness, you know, you're my very dancing, talented. My dancing was epic it was. at the marriage conference. Yeah, you danced at the marriage conference. Oh my I gosh. want a clip of that, Gene. Can we Gene, have a throw clip that of that clip next up week? There. Next week we want a clip of Scott dancing. I know. We'll it's do online. it for TikTok Tuesday. TikTok yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. We're, We're gonna get to see Scotty dance. Scotty dancing. It's and a very it powerful. Thing. You know, what I was amazed at is uh, he's got Grandpa Fior, my storytelling ability. You're, oh, for sure. Your bath tub story it had me rolling on the you plane. have to watch the sermon for the bathtub story <laughs> the bathtub story was epic <laughs> there's there's uh, we'll just give a little little bit of the setting there's bath water there's a baby and, and there's, there's poop and she hadn't so, gone in a while yeah, yeah, yeah so and three all the parents know exactly. everything make you laugh you're gonna have a good time <laughs> yeah with this. Well, let's pray over your uh day dear father lord in the name of jesus we thank you and praise your lord that i may feel like i'm not enough but with you i've got more than enough so i take the little bit of talents a little bit of gifts and a little bit of things that i have lord and I put them in your hands, and that we are a group of people who, who are not stopped by limits, we're not stopped by the ceiling that the world wants to put us in, but instead we know that with you we can break through the impossible and make the impossible a possibility in our life, Lord. We think big, we live big, and Lord, with your help, we conquer whatever obstacles the enemies try to put in front of us, because in this you get the biggest amount of glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Watch this clip. If there was something that I could do that would make it easier for me as I go through life, as I go through fatherhood and, and being a husband and, and having a career, if there was something that I could do that could make it easier for me to determine, to test, and to approve what God's will for my life is, then how many of you would do that thing? That you, you're like, if, if, that, if there was something that, that could do that, then I would do that thing. And what Paul, another, one of the things that Paul is saying here is this, that your thoughts and the way that you think matters. That your thoughts matter. And, and I've determined this, that, that thoughts become beliefs, beliefs become actions, and actions have consequences, good and bad. So, so uh, let me illustrate a little bit. If I, if I go around and, and maybe in third grade somebody told me that, that um, I, I wasn't good at speaking to people or I wasn't likable. Well, the more I have that thought, eventually it's just gonna become something that I believe about myself. And then once I believe it, a lot of times we act out of what we believe, right? That, that if I believe that I'm unlikable and I can't talk to people, then I'm going to go out of my way not to talk to anybody. And then that has consequences. So, so, so in other words, your thoughts matter. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. We like to read that on Wednesdays. And uh, We're like from, six days away from the big event. Revival Arizona, March 17th, Red Mountain Park. Epic. It's horizontal praise is going to be, be thousands there. Thousands of people out there. We're also bringing praise. out vertical worship. Uh, Michael W. Smith is not coming. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard him say Michael got, W. Smith. We got Bon Jovi, though. It's going to be really Bon Jovi, big. REO Speedwagon. It's going to be a massive. Brian Adams. <laughs> I can't get over uh, horizontal worship. <laughs> I can't. Oh, they're great. Have you ever heard them? They're so when they good. open up for vertical worship, it's like a cross. <laughs> it is so perfect. It's like Jesus came down. Uh, anyway. It's going to be awesome. Don't uh, miss it. Uganda, uh, Pastor Apostle Grace is coming out. He's going to be praying over the sick and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bring out the the lost. Bring the out sick. your friends. Bring out the, the discouraged. Bring them all out to the park and watch what happens. And bring Bob. And bring Bob. Everybody should have to bring one Bob. Don't you think that? <laughs> I mean, so to get in, you have to have a Bob. a Bob. Admission is Bob. I've been doing this. <laughs> invite your grandma. All the Bobs oh, are like saved. Invite, invite your grandma. Nobody ever invites grandma to anything. It's a grandma that they don't. Yeah. Grandmas are always the best. Bring your grandma. Mm-hmm. All right. Jason's done. I'm out. Bye. <laughs>